Hi guys, check this out. Tell me what you think of this. This is the Bentley Batur. I don't care what Bentley are calling it. I'm calling it the Bentley Batur. And the Bentley Batur follows from the Bentley Baklava. Now the Bentley Baklava, or the Bacalor as they would call it, but it's the Bentley Baklava. That's what it is. The Bentley Baklava was created by the in-house coach building team at Bentley, which is Mulliner. Uh, one of the oldest coach building houses in the world at over 250 years old. Uh, basically just design bespoke designs and things like that for customers. So they made 12 of the baklavas and now there's going to be 18 of these batur. Now the batur they claim is basically named after a Lake Batur. It's a 16 kilometer square lake in uh, Kintamani on the island of Bali in Indonesia. That's what they're saying. But we all know the Batur actually stands for brave. And uh, you have to look at this car and go, yes, that is a brave new direction in design for Bentley. And it is a new direction. In fact, they're saying that this heralds the new generation of EVs. I mean, Bentley are gonna be putting out five new EVs uh, in five years from 2025 onwards, all electric, like I said, EVs, um, uh, as a result of the Beyond 100 transformation that they announced um, a few months back with an investment of 2.5 billion pounds to convert their range to EV and um, potentially see more coach building and more upmarket cars and more unique cars because of course you know with all the idea of the the ev modular platform the skateboard platform it does mean that you can put kind of basically anything on it these platforms are uh, configurable so you can change the wheelbase you can change the track you can set them up because the the the, the dynamics of the car are also controlled by a series of computer algorithms if you like so we'll get to a stage at some point where most manufacturers will just have a skateboard and they'll just retune it to whatever they want and i suspect this is what's going to happen but it does mean that it gives opportunities for greater innovation and um uh, inspiration and uh, imagination and uniqueness of design of the type of car of the body of the car that's the aspect that probably i'm looking forward to and this for example is the first iteration of that so big big deal for bentley uh, showing a new direction from its new design director. The new design director is Andreas Mint, who also did the Audi e-tron GT, the Audi e-tron GT, the one that Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark drove in the Avengers, um, which is a great looking car. I love that car. That's, I think that's really, I think that's actually more handsome than the Taycan, which of course underneath they're the same car, but I think the, I actually prefer the Audi version. So anyway, so he designed that car. It's brave and it heralds a new EV future, except this isn't an EV. No, this, <laughs> this is not an EV at all. This is good old fashioned uh, six liter W12, the typical Bentley engine. But in this case, it's uh, been tuned up a little bit. They've added a bit more muscles to it. It's got 740 horsepower about and uh, 1,000 Newton meters of torque. So it's basically the most powerful of uh, the W12s ever seen so far. Um, will it see out to 2030? Because 2030 is basically when they're going to discontinue the petrol engines or so they claim. Uh, this is, of course, based on government legislation, which in the UK dictates that um, only EVs and some hybrids will be allowed to be sold at 2030. New um, petrol diesel cars will no longer be allowed to be sold. But having said that, I mean, Bentley saying, OK, we're going to get rid of it at 2030. But don't forget, that rule applies to the UK. Bentley have major markets around the world, America, Middle East, China, etc. And they all have different rules. So part of me is skeptical about this, uh, that all manufacturers are going to get rid of their petrol and diesel engines. Um, but anyway, we'll see. Um, I think we'll still see these cars, if not in this market, in other markets. But I think even here we may have a stay of execution because I just, just don't think the market and the infrastructure will be ready for it. Anyway, back to this car. 18 of these are to be made and they're going to be priced at £1.65 million pounds each. And that's before taxes and that's before options. I mean, they've got pretty good options at 22 inch wheels, for example. But you can obviously, it's Mulliner, it's coach build, so you can customize it and bespoke it and do it exactly the way you want. Um, but then you can't actually because they're all reserved already. So if you wanted one, you're too late. So apparently all 18 are reserved already. Um, and all of those 18 people that have reserved this car, which is basically a Bentley GT uh, underneath still, if you like, despite the radically different looks, um, 
are brave because of the radically different looks i think i mean i i like the baklava i thought the baklava was okay but i didn't think it was as good as the kind of concept that it was originally based on i guess which was the bentley exp10 which is this thing which i thought i mean that just knocked me out when i saw that i was like that's a bentley that's how a sexy bentley should look and i i just absolutely love that now the new batood i haven't seen the batood in real life so you know but batour stands for brave and i can see why brave because this is a brave direction yes okay the silhouette you know if you squint your eyes or you just have a quick glance or you see it in silhouette you go oh yeah it's a bentley but when you really start to look at it you go is that a bentley that grill is really strange it hasn't quite got the the upright in your faceness of a bentley and uh, where's the uh, round lights that are so uh, traditional of bentley cars i mean we've done away with those we've just got we've got these kind of uh, very slim uh, lights that go around the fenders instead now so let's see what um andre's mint and i hope that he isn't uh, uh the chris bangle of <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bentley, Chris Bangle of BMW. I hope that uh, Mint isn't the bangle of uh, Bentley. Uh, but this is the car. But don't forget, this is this is the one off. But this is not how Bentleys in future will necessarily look, although they're saying that this is the new design direction. So what has he got to say for himself? Well, he's saying that uh, we have reimagined Bentley design language, keeping continuity to the past and present while dramatically changing key elements there's no doubt about that uh the design of a modern mentally should always be potent inspirational and harmonious the form has to be strong and muscular whilst remaining graceful there must be both elegant flow and muscularity the term that we use is resting beast stance that's what they call resting beast stance so they say picture a lion or a tiger laying low in attack position in long grass the powerful shape ultimate power rest uh, that looks fast even when it's stationary is what drives their interpretation of the classic Bentley power line and haunch in this new shape so um, it's a very long bonnet uh, they have a line that stretches from the bonnet along the length of the car they call this the endless bonnet feature that's what they're calling it uh, it's the only accent that's given to the car they're basically cleaning up the body quite a bit on it at the very front of the car we've modernized the bentley grill made it lower and more upright uh, to give it a stronger face and more dominant stance the upright elegance brings self-confidence with the luxury stance the grill is flanked by a new headlight shape design that's for sure an evolution of the design used on back baklava i'm not sure that is an evolution i think it's, it's completely different uh, maintaining the single large headlight on either side well, i don't know it's not really even very large actually i really like the cut crystal sort of style of the current bentley gt and the baklava the way the headlights so when you go up there there's just they're works of arts in themselves i really like that but anyway um and these are matched with and the, they talk about the rear they match with the tail lamps of the rear and again look at the rear i i feel like it's just a bit too uh, pert you know it's just a bit i mean it hasn't got that sort of bustle back kind of feel of classic cars of classic bentley's uh, it just feels a little bit pinched to me you know um overall the form is cleaner and simplified we rely, relied on curvaceous surfaces bisected in the right places to reflect light and dark and bring more muscle to design now like i said i haven't seen batood in real life but um it's definitely brave it's definitely new it's definitely different um i guess it remains to be seen if it's definitely desirable when you see batood in person but here it is it looks pretty spectacular looks pretty different and undoubtedly it will be quick but it's not an ev hmm let me know what you think of the batood in the comments below. A big shout out and thanks to Jay Williams over at AirTechnic who are top tier sponsors of Brown Car Guy. Check them out at AirTechnic Co UK for exhausts, brakes, suspension and body kits. Plus our other major sponsor, Nayajan Solutions. Much appreciation also to tier 4 sponsors, Muhammad Ali Humaid, Tom Conway Gordon and Reza Adil. And of course all these other guys who supporting on Patreon. Brown Car Guy is eternally grateful. Hey, think about joining them over at Patreon.com Brown Car Guy. If you can't, don't worry. Just make sure you're subscribing to the YouTube channel and website. Plus follow on social media by searching for Brown Car Guy.